great to be a panda. Why are pandas such an icon, not only for wildlife conservation, but China as a whole? We are joined here in our Beijing studio, Zhu Chunquan, country representative of China Office of the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Nature Resources. Of course, that's an organization very much working hard to protect the pandas around the world. Meanwhile, in New York, we have Myla Rosenthal, Communication Director of the United Nations Development Program. They're having a wonderful program of sustainable development goals, having the young people from all over the world to participate, together with the panda, of course. And also, we are joined by those two young people, two UNDP panda champions. In London, we have uh, Abhinav Bhattachan, who is a student at the University of Leeds in the UK. He also lived in uh, Asia for a quite a period of time. Meanwhile, in Barcelona, we have uh, Rachel Diaz, a graduate student at Autonomous University of Barcelona. And of course, sitting on our table, we need to give these two also a shot because they are our panelists as well for today. A big and a smaller giant panda sitting on our table in the studio. Let me go to the two young people first. I mean, being the UNDP Sustainable Development Goal Champion, that's really something, particularly Abhinav, when it means interacting with the giant panda. It was amazing, it was really fun. Um, the pandas, we actually cleaned one of the pandas' um, cages and uh, we get, got rid of all the bamboos and all the panda poop <laughs> and we even <laughs> fed um, Shishi, one of the ambassadors for the Global Goals, we fed him some cake and we also fed him, I got the chance to feed him an apple, um, which is really fun. Panda apple pie, what about you Rachel? How did you interact with the giant panda in China? Hi. Hi, how are you? Well, it was my first time in, in Asia, in China, and obviously meeting pandas, and it was so funny to stay with them. Actually, uh, first of all, uh, we listened an explanation about how to take care of pandas and how to train them. Uh, it was so, so nice because this training makes uh, easier the medical checkup for the pandas, and I think the keepers has a really hard work to do with pandas and it was so impressive to me see how the panda can understand all the instructions uh -huh. from the keeper it was so good and about panda cake fortunately uh, and lucky me i have the chance to make this panda cake uh, which is a mix between proteins vitamins and some cereals okay. uh, which make uh, the pandas more strong and uh, healthy, yeah, yeah. obviously. But, but, but you know, I, I can the see... the best part... Yeah, I, you, you, are, you two are extremely fascinated with giant pandas, but what about the sustainable development goals? I mean, you two are supposed to promote. Do you still remember some of the goals that you're responsible for? Abhinav? Uh, yes, I think mostly in the UK, we need to promote um, responsible consumption and production. Um, because I feel like uh, if we were more responsible about what we consume and what we buy here, it will have less less impact on the environment right. somewhere else, like in, in China, for example. Right. When well, you brought up the photos and the footage you had with the giant panda in China, is it very convincing to people to convince them to come to your cause? It's, it's a really great success story about how we've kind of um, gone back and kind of uh, aimed to save the environment and uh, that's what one of the key key aims of the sustainable development goals are to absolutely. kind of conserve the people and the planet absolutely what about rachel briefly look at those pandas so cute yeah i think pandas are a very good example for people because um mm, provide us uh, about more conscience, uh, about to be more awareness uh, about these uh, environmental <laughs> problems. So I think it, it's a good uh, example because show to the rest of the world that is possible that yeah. human race can take care of others. Well, we probably could take care of others, but the giant panda in the footage right now, they certainly are taking care of each other, having fun. Uh, so, Maida, let me go to you. Maida Rosenthal, <laughs> of course, you are the UNDP uh, communication director. It's amazing that you have chosen the giant panda as the mascot for the sustainable development goals. 
17 of them we watched earlier on the footage, just so cute. Has that been the greatest ambassador you have ever got? Well, they certainly are fantastic ambassadors for talking about the issues that Abhinav and Raquel were just talking about, about sustainable development, about protecting biodiversity and the world's ecosystems. The pandas, as, we, as you've been saying, they bring a note of joy. They inspire people and they get people excited about thinking about how we can protect these animals and also thinking about how we can protect the planet for our own whole, whole, yeah. all of our future prosperity. Mm. So yes, I agree, these are fantastic ambassadors for the Sustainable Development Goals. Milo, were you there? reminding everybody about the commitments. Were yes, you there? You also, me? when you were interacting, the UNDP is interacting with the panda in China, were you there? Yes, I was so lucky to be on this trip and to be inspired <laughs> not only by the pandas themselves who are amazing, but also by our, the enthusiasm and excitement of our new panda champions. You, you know, you, you're hearing the excitement from two of them today. Uh, they came from all over the world, from five continents, right. from 15 different countries, from all over the world. And they all came together because they're inspired by the image of the pandas and by the urge to protect the environment. Um, to help lift people out of poverty, to show commitment to sustainable development. But I guess, Myla, I mean, to work with the giant panda, of course, is extreme fun, but at the same time challenging because they have their very own personalities. I see some of those uh, workers in the uh, conservation trying to hold them high in the arms, but certainly had a difficult time. <laughs> what was the uh, reality show like at the time? Well, I have to say, first of all, a huge thank you and appreciation to the Chengdu Panda Base, who mm. were our hosts and who uh, arranged the whole trip for all of us. And I think their role as scientists, as educators, as making sure that the pandas are uh, treated with great respect and are taken care of first and foremost as, um, as animals themselves, their commitment to the protection of biodiversity, you know, that came out throughout the whole trip, that they really wanted us all to have an amazing time and to learn as much as we could and to be good ambassadors uh, for, for the pandas and for the planet. Um, they also are tre tremendously committed scientists and preservationists. And so that was, I think for us, uh, you could hear that um, we were able to learn a lot and have a great time um, and also be inspired by the, the example that the panda base is setting mm. in making sure that pandas are protected and, and nurtured. Yeah, I mean to uh, Abhinav and also Raquel, I mean, many of those around the world do not know how giant pandas are being protected inside China. They only see them in the zoo in their own countries. Uh, that China gave them on a temporary basis as gifts. But so when you go there to the Chengdu giant panda base, what did you see? How, you know, human beings there are interacting with the giant panda? Well, the, uh, the pandas are firstly made very comfortable they they have their own space, their own personal space where they can be pandas and do panda things and uh, <laughs> sleep a lot, I guess, and eat bamboos, and um, and so w all of us, uh, w when we were invited, we we got to admire the pandas from from afar, um, and we we were told not to kind of um, intimidate the pandas or mm. shout at the pandas or just respect them very much. And I think that kind of mm. teaches people to respect pandas in the wild as well. Yeah, equal partners. We are all with the giant pandas mm. and many yes. other wildlife. Uh, Raquel, is that the same thing for you? Yeah, it's the same uh, feeling for me because uh, all the staff from the panda base are very good professional people. They are always taking care in a correct way these pandas and show us and teach us and teach to the people how to be respect with the environment and with these pandas. Mm. So I think that is a really, really nice job. This is such a smart idea, Myla, I have to say. Uh, in a way, uh, because as China has become uh, such an important and responsible player in the world and certainly committed to the Sustainable Development Goals for the year 2030, 17 of them together with other nations, and Giant Panda will be mm -hmm. a great uh, representative in this regard. How have you been receiving responses from both the Chinese and others when they're looking at this Giant Panda as a mascot? And the next step, how are you going to work with the giant panda to promote these wonderful sustainable development goals? 
Absolutely, they are a wonderful symbol. And as you said, they uh, reach all over the world. So one of the uh, things that we saw when we opened this competition for what eventually became 17 winners to become Panda Champions, we had entries from thousands and thousands of people mm. from a, over 116 countries. So there was a real outpouring of support of people engaged around wanting to promote uh, the sustainable development goals, wanting to make show their commitment uh, to fight poverty, to protect mm. the planet, um, and uh, to, to um, use these pandas as this wonderful symbol of it. So now that we have the 17 champions who have all been inspired by their, um, their visit to China and by interacting with the pandas and, and seeing them up close, um, they're now back in their home countries, as you heard from um, Abhinav and from uh, Raquel that they are they're looking at how they can think about what are the goals that are most meaningful to them that are most meaningful in their own context how they can continue to spread the word and right. using the image of the pandas and the stories of the pandas is a powerful way to do that so we continue to get attention from all over the world um, and including in China itself where there are also panda champions who are from China who are also um, helping to promote, and as you said, China has made its own commitments uh, on this, under the Sustainable Development Goals, um, its own promises by 2030, mm. like every other country in the world. So as long as we continue to remind countries that they've made these commitments, that they all stood up in the uh, UN General Assembly in 2015, in, uh, and they all made these commitments to the Sustainable Development Goals to fulfill right. them all by 2030, then we can keep reminding, we can keep using the image of pandas to raise awareness and remind everyone that governments have committed to this and that together we can all achieve these goals. Right. I mean, my like, just who would refuse the, the demand and the call from the giant panda, as cute as they are, right? It's hard to refuse. And it, at this point, it exactly. is not only, <laughs> it's a great smart idea. And it is not only giant panda are being used as a mask to promote some of the most important causes, they're also being uh, transported to the other countries to use as a symbol of friendship. China has been raising the world's awareness about giant pandas by loaning them out to local zoos. Sometimes it's controversial, sometimes it's applauded by the local people. One recent example is the Netherlands, which has built a luxurious panda enclosure to welcome them. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this. You were not watching the trailer of the new Kung Fu Panda movie. And this is not a palace or Asian temple in China. No, this is the future home of the two giant pandas at a zoo in the Netherlands. Owen Han Zoo hired a Chinese craftsman to help build this enclosure, which is called Pandasia. The design, construction, proportions, materials, and colors are all inspired by Chinese temples. 34,000 square meters exclusively designated for just two pandas rented from China. Everything around will be pandaized. Look at this ice cream soap there. This panda palace is going to cost about 7 million euros. Internet users in China were shocked after seeing it and are saying it's the most luxurious panda enclosure in the world. Wow, that is really something. What a huge villa the pen has got over there. Mr. Zhu, 40,000 square meters. Wow. <laughs> well, for a conservationist like you, this, of course, is one of those uh, sidebar stories, but it certainly shows people's love for the giant panda. They want to do everything for it. But what exactly is the state of the giant panda here in China? How many of them are they being well protected? Mm. Yeah, yeah, as you know, the giant panda is at this moment is uh, last year IUCN at the World Conservation Congress is a uh, down listing of uh, giant panda for being dangerous to uh, vulnerable. Mm. That that means the the situation uh, of giant panda in the wild is uh, significantly improved. Uh, currently, the wide uh, wide uh, giant panda have more than. 1,864. 1,864, that's the wild giant panda. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the captive breeding giant panda is 374. Yeah, Yeah. so that's a, a both uh, a success in the wild, in situ, and the ex-situ conservation of giant panda. Okay, yeah. and you've been 
together with your organization, going to some of the really far-reaching regions in China, mm -hmm. trying to help the locals to raise their awareness how to protect giant panda. Yeah. Uh, many of these areas are quite poor because in, a, in mountainous areas. Tell me about how you can convince the local population about what to do and how to do it. Yeah, uh, actually, like uh, for giant panda, we cannot do much for giant panda. It's uh, uh, mainly uh, how to help the local communities. Mm. So the local communities, uh, for example, they have been long time living in the panda range in the in Sichuan, Gansu, and the Shanxi province. Right. Uh, for instance, one of the earliest uh, established uh, national nature reserve is Wanglang um, Panda National Nature Reserve. Uh, when it, wa it was created, so at the early beginning, the uh, really like uh, the tension of local community mm. with the rangers. Uh, for example, one of my friend, uh, Mr. Jiang Shiwei, he he's, he was the manager of uh, the na uh, the nature uh, national nature reserve in Wanglang, but only one road, the access from Pingwu County to the. A reserve. I can see yeah. you know the geography really well, but what is your story of trying to convince the local communities about the importance of helping to preserve the nature that the giant panda can live in? Yeah, uh, it, uh, actually initially the local community they are not uh, quite uh, understand and also not <coughs> very support to for the conservation. They, for example, they cut the road uh, to access the nature, nature reserve. When the rangers they come back to the town to get some food and and so on. When they travel back to the nature reserve, but they use the logs mm. to cut the road and quite attention. And but later on, the reserve uh, managers they find a way how to the local community, for instance, to uh, how to develop like a homestay and to generate income for the local community, mm -hmm. and also to uh, help them to uh, like uh, uh, to raise like the bean farm. And uh, and uh, to generate uh, help the local community to get more like uh, uh, income and then improve their living like okay. conditions. So as a result, the local communities come to realize that the giant panda is really their source of life in a way. Yeah, definitely. So they have to protect them. Yes. So that their life will be guaranteed. Yeah. For example, the the bean farmers they need like flowers. If we do not have flowers, they have plants. They are not like sources of uh, like. Uh, like a bean honey. So they protect the, the forest, uh, right. the, then protect the panda. So they can benefit uh, by themselves. Okay. And also attract uh, the tourism and to, to be to see the habitat and stay the, the local community. This is what I want to ask you, yeah. uh, Mr. Zhu, because I mean, this is a very serious cause for you. I mean, when you yeah. talk about it, you already look uh, extremely serious, even though we're talking about something yeah. like as lovely as the giant panda. Yeah. But tell me about this. I mean, how, in a way, you see the balance between putting the panda into the zoo, loaning the panda out, and keeping the panda in the nature conservancy? I mean, when it comes to these choices, mm -hmm. which one should we choose? Yeah. At this point, why the other choices still exist? Yeah, I, actually, I also have this uh, like a policy or pay a policy to uh, really like uh, encouraging uh, the government, uh, local community, conservation organization to put the first priority for the wider population and habitat, habitat conservation. Mm -hmm. But uh, the breeding, for for instance, the panda captive breeding, like uh, the Chengdu panda bases mm -hmm. mentioned earlier by the panda champions. I can see the yeah. smiles of the two young people when they're uh, talking about the Chengdu habitat. Yeah. Okay, anyway, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Zhu. Okay, and so the, the, the putting the zoo or the captive breeding can help to uh, like uh, learn more the biology, ecology of the animal and how to like uh, to support the wider mm. population conservation. I think that's uh, the really raise uh, awareness and the people, it's really difficult to see panda in the wild. For example, I've been working conservation have uh, you seen it? near 20 years. I only have one time really? in Qinling Mountains. I saw once a What panda. was it like at the time when uh, you saw it? Uh, and the what circumstances? Uh, were you I surprised? Were you happy? Were you Tell yeah. us more about that. Very excited. And it's uh, very uh, like uh, the they cannot see giant panda the the eyes not very good, 
but there they can listen, they can hear. Right. If you walk in the forest, they can hear, they can hear you. And uh, very like difficult to reach them. But we are sitting on the slopes, mountains, yes. and waiting the panda come to approach us. Oh, yeah, when and did he? Yes. When the panda reached us about two or three meters, everybody got very excited. Yeah. I don't know if our camera is cutting to the uh, face of Mr. Zhu right now. <laughs> Just now he is a really serious uh, Mr. Zhu look like, but right now he big smile on his face when it comes to real panda. No, er no everybody take photos. Yes. But uh, the, 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 the sound of cameras really scared the panda. <laughs> the panda really like run away immediately, I'm very sure. fast. Yes, yeah. but uh, that story will stay with you, that memory will yes. stay with you. The, that really you've been working so hard throughout your life for this giant panda, you mm. finally met them. Thank you so much for all of you. Zhu Chunquan, Myla Rosenso, Abinap Batachan, and Retro Diaz. Thank you. And you're watching World Insight with Tianwei still to come on our program.